Hey climbers and welcome or welcome back to the tree house. My name is Ree and this is the tarot tree and in today's video I just thought we'll um, have a little catch up for January. Check out some January jovials as it were. Um, what I got up to in January, some bits and bobs I've acquired, some things I've watched, um, any little adventures I've gone on which hasn't been many but <laughs> I shall digress and share anyway. Um, just have a little catch up really. So um, where to begin? Um, on the old adventure kind of uh, topic, shall we go? Shall we venture on the adventures? Really and truthfully, I didn't go on many, so I don't have much footage or anything to insert for you guys this uh, this month. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, um, I have to be honest with you. January has been quite a hermit month for me, and I'm quite happy about that. I'm I'm cool with that. It kind of tends to be for me. I think I need that downtime after like a, a lot of the festivities of you know Christmas and New Year's and kind of being quite sociable in those kind of weeks. Um, I kind of like to take this time of year to take stock, you know, plenty of lists, plenty of journals as you'll see <laughs> going forward. Um, you know, I do quite like this kind of time of year for like resolutions and etc. But um, I did, you know, I went to the pub, I might insert some images here, you know, a few football matches I went to go see with my partner some nice cozy pubs in my area which are quite nice and went out to eat a couple of times and um I think the other thing was just getting in contact with some like really like old friends of mine and just like picking up where you left off isn't that great like when you haven't spoke to people for maybe a decade <laughs> or more and you just reconnect and this um hopefully that will bring some adventures in February so watch this space but um, yeah, it overall it's just been very chilled, quite, you know, I've been at home quite a bit, you know, I've had a little bit of uh, ill health this this month, you know, but some back-to-back -back kind of colds and flus and just, you know, other things going on, so I just needed that little bit of a respite and hermit phase, I think, and um, I definitely I have been enjoying it. Um, so what did I get up to indoors then as I was quite a hermit um we might as well just kind of go into the tv shows and movies right what have I been enjoying ah 1899 guys have you watched this um I don't know whether I should recommend it or not because apparently it's been cancelled which is a bummer <laughs> like, I've got like one episode left to watch and I'm like it better like draw some conclusions for me um it's basically quite a mysterious sort of thriller. You don't know what's going on. All these people seem to be on some sort of Titanic-like boat. There's been a boat before them that's gone missing. All of them, like the main characters, have got a mysterious letter or something telling them to be on this boat, etc. And um, they get a distress signal from the one that's been missing. You know, they go on board. No one's there but a little boy, etc. And all weird stuff keeps happening on the boat. And the main character is a woman, and she's trying to like she keeps having flashbacks. All of them have had some traumatic kind of events. So you're trying to work out who are these people? Why are they on this boat? What's happened to all the people on the other boat? How do they get out of this sort of Bermuda Triangle they've got stuck in because their boat now can't uh, leave? And there's all these a few weird kind of characters. Um, on the ship they're up to no good it seems um it's quite poignant because it's got about i don't know how many languages are spoken it's quite an impressive script because french russian polish german um cantonese japanese english <laughs> you know there's a lot of languages portuguese is getting spoken in this uh in this series which was quite interesting and it was interesting to see even though people couldn't speak the same languages, you know, how they were bonding together and getting things done. So, yeah, um, if you've watched it, let me know what you thought. I hopefully have, won't get any spoilers because I would have finished it by then. Um, but, yeah, if you like a good cerebral kind of thriller, um, you know, give it a go. It's, it was actually quite enjoyable. I have to admit, I did enjoy Well, I don't know. This last episode could be disappointing, so <laughs> we never know. But I have enjoyed it thus far. Um, what else? I watched The Pale Blue Eye. Um, I quite like Christian Bale's work. This is the one that sort of follows Christian Bale as a detective gets pulled into this sort of like, I guess, army barracks where a young soldier has been murdered or killed or his heart has been taken out after he's died or whatnot. He's trying to investigate 
and a young Edgar Allan Poe happens to be a cadet at this place and kind of takes an interest and wants to help him along his way. It starts off quite good, I have to admit. Um, the ending, mm, <laughs> I don't know, Jewelry's out on that one to be honest. It was a little bit of a weird one for me, um, quite abrupt, but um, some good creepy performances. The guy who plays Edgar Allan Poe actually is Dudley from Harry Potter, which is interesting because he looks so different now. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of Poe's work, you know. We had to study him in college um, and I got quite uh, into him at that point. Um, quite a fascinating person, had a very bizarre life, d died in a very strange way. Uh, had a bit, you know, a bit weird as well, wouldn't need to be fair, but his storytelling, especially his craft in short storytelling, you know, short storytelling is really difficult. <laughs> it's, it's a big skill to be able to be able to do that. Um, yeah so it was interesting to have him as a character in that um yeah it was quite good it was quite good um what else did i watch ah i, I told you i got into the k dramas guys <laughs> i'm in i'm in deep uh there's one called love alarm i started watching which is i guess a romance one which was the premise was quite interesting i have to say because i can imagine it happening so it's basically this app gets released so you kind of have this 10 year window i think so it first the main characters they're all in like high school secondary school together right and um this app gets released um, what you don't realize is actually one of the kids in the school has made it um or well, you do realize they show you that but not everyone else has realized because he wants his crush to know that he has a crush on her but he doesn't have the uh basically the courage to say it to her himself so what he does is he's developed this app and it basically shows you when you come within a certain radius of someone it will like ding ding or like you know they read all the metrics or whatever i don't know how somehow they they that app can just can decipher whether someone has an attraction or has love for you basically and um it becomes this sort of whole big thing where you know uh, it just you know even 10 years down the line it becomes like it takes over people's lives basically like you know they can only get married if that their app dings off you know becomes this exclusive thing but anyhow the characters that are in is this main girl and then two friends basically who kind of both end up liking her you know one of those love triangle situations going on here <laughs> but um very interesting very interesting concept some people didn't like the ending because i think uh, yeah, obviously she ends up with one and there. <laughs> there's jewelry's out on who 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 they wanted her to end up with. But um, yeah, I don't want to do any spoilers. But I don't know. I actually, although it was a bit agitating in points, to be honest, especially with her, the main character, at some points, um, I thought the premise was very interesting. It's quite scary to think, you know, how kind of um, imposing technology can be on our relationships and how and our connections, you know, even how we see social media sort of really, I was going to use the word infringing, I, that sounds very negative. I guess on the most part, I've had kind of a bit of a negative outlook on, on social media and things like that, unless you can use it properly. Um, yeah, and like kind of taking over our lives or taking over our innate ability to connect with people and make our own choices and make our own destinies, you know, rather than have an app decide, well, no, you can only go with these people because these are the people that like you, etc. Um, yeah, it did open some questions, some philosophical ones, even though it was like a K-drama and it had all of the, you know, all of the kind of rom-com kind of, well, there was some comedy, but romance kind of drama going on. I did quite enjoy it. So yeah, if it's up your alley, give it a go. Another one I started is Hotel de Luna. I haven't finished that yet, but this, guys, the premise, oh, I do really like it. It's basically about this... Um, hotel that's specifically for the dead like the ghosts and it kind of is there to kind of help them move on basically or let them sort of have a little respite before they go on to where they're going next um but the kind of um shaman like the lady that's in charge of it she's not dead herself but she's been alive for like hundreds and hundreds of years it's almost like a curse for her to be the kind of um, manager of the hotel or the owner of the hotel and she's become quite you know uh maybe a little bit kind of aloof and bitter and kind of in that kind of role you know being trapped I guess in this sort of alive and non-alive sort of state and she saves a man but she says you know I'll give, I'll give you back your life because he stumbles into the <laughs> hotel when he shouldn't do 
um, he says, please spare me, I have a son. She goes, you have to send your son back to, back to me to be my manager when he's older. And then she basically ropes him into doing that. And it's quite funny, there's a lot going on, but it's quite touching actually, uh, how they're trying to help these spirits move on. And I, and I haven't got to the end yet, but I feel like these two characters, the, the little boy that grows up and then becomes the manager and her, they're gonna help each other in some way. Um, you get flashbacks to her sort of origins so yeah check it out if you like a bit of a fantasy supernatural but kind of comedy drama um probably going to be some romance in it too to be fair but yeah um i think that's mostly everything i watched in my little hibernation january phase I'm trying to think anything else did i watch anything else all right <laughs> that's all i can remember so how about we move on to some bits and bobs um what did i get so first and foremost let's start with <laughs> the centerpiece the pia de resistance of the bits and bobs i don't even know if i can describe her as that to be honest but um basically we're gonna blame sandy from exploring <laughs> tarot for this she introduced me to the world of Blythe dolls when we were talking um, at the end of last year and this and the start of this year. And so, you know, I had to go and get one. So guys, this is Willow. I don't know if you can see her properly. Wow, she's like really up close. <laughs> I'll probably insert some pictures. She's on some sort of carnival thing right now and she's dressed as a lion. And I think she's absolutely adorable and i am in love and i've just been buying outfits and stuff so that's been <laughs> so yeah here she is um looking like a little leo there um she was called a uh, willow and it was quite there's been a lot of synchronicities this month actually that's my birth tree it's one of my favorite trees um i love that film growing up anyone else who watched willow um and i was just like she's the one for me i have to get her she's like customized freckles and she's here to represent i guess my childlike self in the fact that one she's a doll and she's a doll that you can customize and buy outfits for which is something i really did like to do when i was younger even though i had very tomboy tendencies and i liked sports and i liked playing out and I had a you know it's always out there with the boys um I did have my girly like little girly phases I did love my Barbies I did love my Polly Pockets and dressing them up and it was just really nice to get back to that some people may think it's weird <laughs> but I don't care some people have said she's cute some people say she's creepy personally I think she's she's pretty cute and she's here to represent a part of me and she's going to be in my inner child kind of a big part of my inner child work I think a good physical representation of that she's going to be part of my inner child kind of um altar space um and she's sitting up on her her little carnival rhino <laughs> and um I look forward to that you know she's representing little re and I am looking to do a lot of work and continue my work with the inner child this year specifically as you'll see as I go on about what I plan for my practice and what I've started in January it all kind of fits you know the foundation levels going back to that you know that sort of tabula rasa state you know that that purity state that you know before you get kind of I was going to say corrupted that sounds really <laughs> It sounds very um, you know, pessimistic, um, you know, back to that more authentic state, that's what I would say. Um, and I really look forward to working with her through that. She came with lots of, well, she came with a fairy outfit, which is so sweet. I have to insert some pictures. Here's the wand and stuff, because I used to love dressing up as a fairy, <laughs> genuinely. And then I got her some more sort of outfits. This is like a monkey outfit i was born in the year of the monkey that is my chinese zodiac a water monkey to be precise <laughs> so yeah she had to have that the cheeky vibes you know i do like a fellow monkey um she's got a little meerkat hat there we have her fairy dress i definitely like i want to buy her a little trunk i actually think i have a little trunk that i'm going to put all these outfits in and a strawberry hat <laughs> because 
uh, that's what my dad calls me. That's my dad's childhood nickname, or one of his childhood nicknames for me. He was quite creative with them, to be fair. Um, Tinkerbell's another one, <laughs> because I was such a moody little bear. But um, yeah, Willow, I'm absolutely in love with her. Um, I can't wait to customise her a little bit more, get some different eyes, different hands, get her little shoes, more outfits. Um, hair colour change maybe to make her a bit more my colouring which is a bit more on the ginger front to be fair <laughs> but um yeah the world of Blythe dolls I've had to really make sure I don't overdo it like <laughs> Sandy Sandy I blame you no um I'm glad you know I'm, I'm I don't regret that purchase at all um I think there's something so beautiful and creative about that sort of customization of dolls and getting back to things you enjoyed when you was younger. I don't think there should be any shame in that, you know, life should be about play. And especially when it can, like a, you know, toys and tarot are quite a big thing for me, actually. I might have to make a video on that. Like, I feel like they have such a space. I collect figures in general, like of characters that I have enjoyed and loved growing up. And even now when I watch shows, um, they mean something to me. They have poignancy, they have symbolic value, um, you know. Or I just like them, they're just cute characters. I want them around aesthetically, <laughs> you know. So that is Willow. She is my big kind of buy. Um, okay, next up, what was the other bits and bobs I got? Let's have a look. So next up, I got some kind of little trinket boxes and one that's for a very specific reason but this one I bought it turned out to be a bit smaller than I anticipated to be fair Let's pick it up so I could show you but isn't it beautiful I think this is from New Zealand it has a kiwi and it's like meant to be like shell in there and there's just something so beautiful about it um I was looking for these sort of trinket boxes initially to do some shadow work with and I don't know why this one sort of symbolized that a little bit to me like being a bit lost in the shadow but like having to shine light on it and this little kiwi I don't know and it's, it's really I don't know I just really liked it to be honest genuine power shell um so it was a little bit smaller than I anticipated for I was going to use it for so I still need to find a kind of use for it but it's beautiful nonetheless um Maybe I could store some jewellery or crystals in that, that would be, be a shout. Um, but next up is this beauty, which is a kind of, I think it's an antique uh, brass Japanese box. So it's all like brass all round. Um, you see these beautiful inlays of like the scene. And I basically bought this to act as what we shall call a Pandora's box and I have to have to point you in the direction of Angel at um oh my goodness what is it feeding feeding my soul one two one two if that's not her channel name I shall have it linked <laughs> don't worry because I really need to give her her props for this she made this video and honestly one of my favorite finds of January as well is her channel so definitely check her out a fellow UK youtuber or tarot tuber should I say um, I share this concept for tar uh, for shadow work of having a Pandora's box, like a box you had when you feel triggered and overwhelmed. When it happens, write that stuff down, kind of what you're feeling, put it in, not to hide it away like Pandora's box and lock it away, but so you can come back to it at a later time. And I thought, what a great tool for dealing, like trying to analyse your triggers and stuff and actually doing shadow work that way. I thought it was beautiful. So... I had to take that into my practice honestly and then this just finding this box was just like a joy at the moment it's got I've actually got a specific tarot in there which is pretty cool maybe we'll have a quick look this is a magic ad de minibus tarot you can see it's metal inside um this won't be living here <laughs> indefinitely um because this has to become a working kind of pandora's box but it is a cool deck and it's a linen finish um I need to get really more familiar with what the hell these demons are, but isn't it cool? <laughs> this could be quite a good shadow work deck. But um, yeah, enough of that. Um, so yes, the Pandora's box concept. Check Angel's channel out. I shall leave it in the description because honestly, it's been such a joy and such interesting insights into another tarot tuber's practice and like 
really helpful ones as well and just really nice lovely energy she has and she really shares her kind of healing sort of journey and tarot practice like in such a kind of you know friendly manner i love it so check her out um another channel i've been loving while we're on we're on the subject <laughs> is uh a year in a day is that jenny yeah definitely love the vibe it's so cozy um again another blythe doll uh, lover it seems and um love the aesthetics everything like i said so cozy such a very calming presence like soothing voice so definitely check her channel out again i'll put them both in the description so um really and truthfully as i did tell you i was trying to do a bit more of a low buy year i think i've done all right i haven't bought too much i have to say um uh, i have to oh i didn't go too well i did better with the decks let's just say that way and i did stay more disciplined with what i bought so i will show you and plus some have come in are kickstarters <laughs> look at me just fine are kickstarters and ones that i was sent over to me like from the christmas period so like a christmas kind of present um that's a bit later but um yeah in terms of uh practice like i said january is more about just getting my shit together basically i like i said i like making a list i like getting the journal sorted out i like being organized i like feeling like i know where i'm going with the year and this is my tarot year of the chariot you know and i really felt that like that focus that direction is something that is a big goal of mine this year really keeping hold of that energy and i found myself creating a, a word of the year which was you know i hadn't really done that before um it just sort of came serendipitously and then i saw candy soul and soil had been doing oh, a great video check that video out she made on that and i thought okay this is a thing people do this okay we've, this is even more kind of confirmation that i should be doing this and so yeah my, my word of the year is actually um stability that was the word that came out can i you know keep coming back to that word and create and foster that in my life uh, through my practices through you know how i spend how i'm living um what i want to create for myself so this is going to be a very foundation building year and i'm excited about that um so yeah um how is that really working in terms of like my practice um again journals galore <laughs> top three here we have at the moment though i have a video coming up about my shadow work journal is the inner child uh, journal foundational again looking at those foundational years is already something i do in therapy um and i'm in therapy weekly i strongly suggest everyone should be in some form of therapy whatever it may be um doesn't always have to be talking or paid for uh our tarot practice is therapy you know it's all about becoming self-aware it's all about kind of getting to learn ourselves better learn our patterns break them do that shadow work integrate those shadows you know and live a better life moving forward taking action in that alignment you know so this is my inner child one and i just thought it was so cool it's so sensory so it's quite soothing <laughs> those are journals uh this is my um zodiac sign i definitely want to get um i definitely want to dive deeper into astrology this year um i already became quite intrigued and excited about it last year and i just want to develop that as my taurus is part of my sun sign um and i just really pretty cool pretty cool little book um really just mapping out my main signs getting in touch with that learning what they kind of mean for me um so that's been really cool foundational you know and um shadow work was another one but last but not least what i've got here <laughs> guys guys can we as you can see i like a notebook that speaks to what i'm kind of doing the work i'm using it for guess what this one's for go on i'll give you a second you're right it's for chakra work um yeah i'm diving quite you know again the chakra system is something i was very interested in really seemed to resonate with me especially in my reading last year and i've just wanted to build on that and i've come to the conclusion that although of course we it's a system that you know is everything is has to be in balance etc we don't just kind of focus solely on one but there, there is a pathway to it um they call it the rainbow bridge right um 
for me I'm going to be doing a lot of work it seems on the root chakra you know I've, and I think the word stability was a bit of a giveaway my own self telling me that that is where I needed to do that work um, and so this is going to be my notebook really just kind of getting to grips with that putting my studies what I've learning about the chakras in here doing that work I obviously want to do it for all of the chakras and I'm not going to neglect the others you know but I feel like the root is going to be quite a main focus for me especially at the start of this year um first half of this year I would say so this is my notebook for that and um I'm really excited I honestly I feel like I've got a little bit of my spark back I feel more um feel more grounded or at least I'm heading that way and that makes me feel more happier again stability it means a lot to me I I feel like everything is better off from a grounded place in my life anyway I'm a I'm a earth sign I'm a double earth sign <laughs> in my main main three um all we like being grounded you know I don't like being up in the air and I can be quite scattered and disorganized and uh, it doesn't really serve me very well <laughs> I feel like it has to you have to get back to basis you've got to strip down you know get back to that foundational level like after your tower moment and just you know build that solid foundation my practice is going to center around that this year heavily I believe in all aspects shadow work inner child work all my tarot work in that regard the altars I'm going to create um and yeah I I feel good I feel happy about it genuinely um so yeah hopefully i'll be making videos along that journey with you guys to kind of give you some insights in that and maybe some you know we can share some advice and you know some things insights into our own practices and you know create a little community we will help each other out of this stuff you know um it could be fun genuinely um i'm looking forward to that so yes um what next let's go on to books shall we um <laughs> and then we'll end on decks okay um books that i have gotten in this um this january and then i'll talk on a book that i've been loving reading this january um so first up as you guys know or may not know i got the yokai yochi tarot my wonderful friend at exploring tarot sandy sent that over to me so kindly took it in for me um and as you know it doesn't really come with a very extensive guidebook you know and i wanted to understand a bit more why certain yokai were chosen or trying to create even just my own sort of connections between that yokai and the um the card meaning the the tarot it was associated with the tarot card it was associated with in that deck and so i felt like i needed a book to help me with that i already had one sort of yokai book but this seemed very cool and this is like a translated version of a kind of an original kind of yokai um encyclopedia and it's called japan demonium it's a huge monster of a book <laughs> And as you can see, it has sort of like original kind of encyclopedic images and it just gives you some background on what those yokai are. And obviously, as it's an encyclopedia, it's sort of alphabetical, which is handy because we do get the names by the yokai yochi tarot in this guidebook, which is handy. And I literally just want to make a study and a little kind of notebook, seeing how I feel those yokai marry with each card and i would like to kind of um do that on this channel like do it with you guys once i've got like it down a little bit and <laughs> started my little um my little guidebook my extra guidebook for it we shall definitely create a series on that because it seems like a few people would enjoy that um fairlight tarot has just done one actually so check her video out I'll, i shall link it because that looked really interesting and uh, looked quite fun so yeah so that's that book um yeah this is i gotta decorate it it's a little bit plain isn't it um this will be my notebook for doing that creating a little guidebook for that notebooks galore as you can see <laughs> i definitely went a bit crazy in the stationery shop you know when they do all those discounts in january love it love a bit of paper chase me um what next okay a very special book um for any avatar stands here and i don't mean <laughs> the blue people i mean the air, the airbender people um i got this uh guidebook i unfortunately heard about this tarot deck far too late and i'm 
still quite gutted that I didn't get my hands on it because I literally just missed out on it maybe by like a week or something um but kindly like I kind of went on Facebook kind of tr group pages you know like trade pages and it's like does anyone know like if they have this deck will they sell it to me and then someone kindly said oh, why don't you try and contact the creators you know they're quite cool people I've dealt with them before and um, they might have some extras right you know nothing ventured nothing gained no harm in asking so like I sent them an email and they got back and they literally said well unfortunately we don't have any decks left but we have the guidebook which comes with a pdf which I think means I could print these cards um I can't seem to find the pdf so I need to give them another email to figure that out or if anyone has the pdf to this please let me know or <laughs> just send it to me because I would love to print this out as a deck but um because it's so well done honestly the pics are amazing and when you're going to see the images in a moment you'll understand um yeah and a bunch of other goodies I got some key rings some pins etc everything else this was like a charity project so that's really nice that it kind of went to a good cause and obviously it's quite difficult to get the go ahead on these kind of projects because obviously Nickelodeon usually will shut them down you know I think it only got the go ahead because it's a charity and there wasn't that many developed um so as you can see we've got the world card um this was a multi-artist drawn deck I love that it has these references to Avatar. I love the artwork. It's just, it's breathtaking. Look at this. One day, one day I may find, <laughs> I may find the original deck, but I really hope I can find the way to print this off as like a PDF. But it's just such a lovely production. And it's just nice to kind of see the cards. I do have another Avatar deck. But it's a tarot guy. It's called it was called Avatar. Everything puns. It had everything I loved. How did I miss out on this? Wonderful production for a charity project and such beautiful artwork and pics. So yeah, guys. Um I'm kind of sorry if you are a big Avatar fan and didn't know about this because it might just make you sad as well, but I had to show it. It's such a wonderful thing to have in the collection as a tarot guy book anyway, and hopefully I can print that deck out. That would be really cool. Um, and last but not least, the book I've really been getting into and enjoying this year. I think I sent it. Sent it? I think I mentioned it before, like when I got it. But that is Eastern Body, Western Mind. Psychology in the Chakra System as a Path to Self by Anadea Judith. What a wonderful book. I think if you're interested in developmental psychology, the chakra system, Jungian psychology, you know, looking at the chakra system as a sort of pathway to sort of growth and healing, definitely give it a go, you know. I mean, I think it's so well written and it's not too difficult to read. It's a bulky book for sure. But you can literally just switch to the bits you want to work on. You know, it breaks it down into each chakra. Um, and it's just been really great. Like, I've literally been studying the root chakra quite um, uh, a lot with this with this book. And it's going to help it's helping me with my filling out my notebook, etc. And just really opening my mind, like, to things I didn't know about them, certain chakras. Because um, it looks at things from a sort of psychological kind of bit. Um, viewpoint as well which I really like um I really like the way Anadea writes uh, she's definitely very like um very experienced in this work you know she's been doing this healing work for a long time and if you're a practitioner you know it gives sort of advice for like wh what kind of work you can do on yourself or with clients as well so that's pretty cool like if you want to work in that field you know and it includes so much like somatic therapy kind of reiki things of that nature yoga um all sorts of grounding techniques so honestly guys there's such a wealth of information and knowledge in this book and so easy like easily to digest uh so easy to digest as well don't be put off by the size of it so that's been such a joy this month i've really been enjoyed um i've really liked digging into that um now what do we want to move on to new decks <laughs> like re you told us she wasn't buying anymore yes i lied no i have been discerning i did say okay i want to do a low by year i'm going to be discerning um and if there's something that comes up that 
had been on my list for a long time and is at a good price and maybe is an out of print thing I'm gonna go for it and this first deck falls very much in that category and that would be guys don't be jealous <laughs> uh, the Llewellyn print of the guy in tarot yes I finally found it without those <laughs> annoying blue borders guys and of course i had to have it because i'm an earth sign of course i needed this deck um yeah for well, the price i was the price was good I, I couldn't say no and honestly do i regret it no i have wanted this deck for a long time and i just couldn't bring myself to buy the Schiffer version because i absolutely despise those borders and i couldn't be bothered to cut them off basically um and i feel like the cards look is very thick um i do hope that they bring out another edition which is basically this but maybe more the saturation of the chiffre this is a lot more fainter which i do quite like because it's quite watercolory and that is my vibe but i do quite like the vibrancy of the chiffre version i have to say um but a wonderful deck look at the people in this deck oh, i'm really looking forward to using this when spring comes around i think i'm kind of, kind of saving it for that to a degree because that's my one of my favorite seasons but um look at it wonderful i couldn't pass it up beautiful look at these characters my goodness the way that she created this deck with such energy and poignancy you know that they look so real oh i love it i love the name I love the backs, <laughs> I love the size of this one because I have tiny baby hands, so definitely, you know, I don't regret it. When I saw it, I was so shocked, I hardly ever see this get come up for sale in this, in this version. I was like, yep, that's a bit of me if it doesn't go too high in price. <laughs> and I won the bid, so yes, love it, had to be done, had to be done. And will be a treasured deck, you know, it's definitely not going to be wasted on me. Um, and like I said, when I was being discerning, I actually had like a couple of decks written down, which was like, okay, these are the ones you, you have leeway to buy this year. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, that was a really cool find. I'm happy about that. The other one was um, this one, which is the Garden of Lucid Daydreams Oracle by, obviously Patrick Valenza, Deviant Moon. Um, this is my second deck by him. I actually don't have the 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 um what is it? Is it called the Deviant Moon? The the kind of one uh, could be. Gosh, my mind's gone blank. Anyway, this one one obviously the Garden of Lucid Daydreams. The name in itself had me, but I also felt like this. I needed to try this out with particularly the Blood Moon Tarot, which I'll maybe show you again because I have been using them together. But just can we just see how wacky and wonderful i love how dark tone they are i love the messages honestly like the guidebook to this is amazing i have to print it out but look at this very poignant don't you just love his work i love the coloring oh and i'm glad i finally got like another deck of his really look at that and it's like a little ditty one. There's the sun. Um, very contemplative. Quite good for shadow work. But like I said, I really wanted to use this with the Blood Moon, and it didn't didn't disappoint. And also, I used it with the deck that I'm going to show you in a moment. That was a Kickstarter deck I received, and they work very well together as well. So yeah, the Garden of Lucid Daydreams Oracle. I'm not sure if it's still available. I didn't think it was that's why when i saw it especially in the uk it's quite hard to get some of his decks um but yeah i had to get it I had to it was a good price so yeah the next one is a kickstarter that came another deck that i had been waiting to get my hands on for ages and it just worked out a better price to get a kickstarter and i actually really do like this edition and this is the tarot of the unknown which is by quarter press um, absolutely love that guy I love the stuff that he creates I just wish it was just cheaper to ship to the UK and for all of you that are fans of Over the Garden Wall 
this is no surprise to you this is a fan deck for that it's more than a fan deck because it's just so beautifully curated i love greg i love this series it's literally honestly guys i think it's like how many episodes is it like 12 13 it's like an, a bit of an irreverent but no it's quite a deep cartoon i would say like a little allegory about these two brothers that get lost in the you know <laughs> over the garden wall and the unknown in this sort of forest and they're on these little adventures and but they can't remember how they got there and they're struggling to get out kind of thing and they're like dressed up for halloween or whatnot uh, i didn't really sell that very well but um this is this is the other brother do you see the backs on this version oh i love it and it's just such <laughs> such a great show honestly no matter what your age is give it a go if you can find it if you liked those sort of cartoon network sort of shows when you were younger them sort of deeper ones if you like things like rick and morty those things that you know of course like any age group can watch them but you get something from them if you're an adult as well because they make you contemplate certain things um give it a go um it's funny it's charming it's quite touching it's quite emotional at points actually it can be scary at other points it's got everything you want <laughs> in in a, in a story um and yeah i had to have the deck to go along with it i need to get the guidebook now tarot of the unknown guys i love the production as well the gilding this is the mini version which is perfect for my little hands and um yeah aesthetically this and the um patrick valenza deck i feel like they go quite well as well because again it's like into that unknown that garden and the forest energy i like it a bit dark I've got that macabre vibe um i really do like that combo as well so next up we have one that very kindly sandy again sent on to me which is like a christmas present actually um well <laughs> like money i got given and it was something i wanted for christmas and that is the tarot of the southwest sacred tribes um so currently out of print um though i don't have connections to this culture in blood i have connections in family ties which maybe i'll speak about it um in a video in the future quite strong one going back quite a long time and very specifically with my grandfather so um there was something about this artwork that i liked some people have um not liked this deck because they feel like it's quite macabre and it sort of depicts everyone as looking quite sad and forlorn and serious and that's not how you know they view people from these cultures which i can i understand but there's something about this artwork that i just found very uh, it drew me in and i had wanted a deck you know that spoke to the indigenous people of the americas um you know for certain work and study and just um there, this one just i can't i can't really explain what it was I, it just it sort of like looked into my soul i don't know there's something about it that just really drew me in and it's quite difficult to find um i do feel like i may get the vision quest as well i do actually have like uh what's the here is it the healing tarot um but this artwork just was very touching to me um so yeah i kind of look forward to kind of using this um a bit more spiritual a bit more ancestral work actually um and i just let you know how i get on with it they're the backs they're pretty cool um but yeah it's literally brand new it seems it doesn't seem like anyone had used it so it was a really good you know, for a good price as well usually this deck's quite expensive so yeah thank you sandy because i found it in a shop in finland so she was managed to t she uh, managed to take it in for me and send it on so i'm really grateful for that because i didn't really think i was going to get my hands on this deck actually but there you go you never know guys um <laughs> okay 
and what we got here one more kind of weird out of printy one that came up for a good price it's called the tarot of the absurd and yes no one knows how to do look the box i hate this box i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i don't know how to do this like ribbons everywhere there's no sides to it it's crazy from the get-go but uh the images they just remind me do you remember hercules or like them sort of greek pottery like with the kind of with the uh like kind of hero sort of depictions on it you know and in hercules the disney version and like the singers bless my soul hercules on a roll all of that so it reminds me of because it's like kooky kind of drawings it really is what it says it is it is crazily absurd but it's so charming <laughs> and it's quite captivating um and i just yeah i had wanted for a while and i couldn't find it anywhere because it was out of print and then it randomly came up and I was like, all right, if it goes for a decent price, I'll, I'll take it. And so one did. Look at the doors. I want to do uh, my collection of monochromatic. This really reminds me of something. What is it? Some sort of a cartoon network vibe. Um, Samurai Jack or something. Yeah. Um, what's going on here? I'm losing my train of thought. Yeah, I want to do a video of my monochromatic decks, so this will definitely be making an appearance there also. But yeah, for now, this is the Tower of the Absurd. <laughs> Very much enjoy it. It's quite a joy to look through that one because it's so kooky. So yeah, I would say those be the purchases. Um, what decks have I been using this... Uh, this January. Um, do we have a few deck combos? Yes, we do. Um, where is the, that? Again, I spoke about it quite a few times already. The Wisdom of the Forest has still been a big favourite for January. There's no denying that. <laughs> I found another combination for it, guys. And that is the um, Dark Days Tarot. Which is a pretty cool, like, um, square deck, really. You can see them. We can get a little measure on these if they'll all go in the frame. Yeah. I like this deck because it's sort of a directional deck as well. Like, it has readings for whatever way the cards come up, as you can see. It's got black and white. Well, the white cards are the major. But, yeah, it's just I've got such interesting depictions, if you can see here. Quite a feminine deck, which I like. Got mermaid energy. But again, loving it with this. That sort of monochromatic energy is going strong here still. Um, oh gosh, cards falling everywhere. Um, love it. Really been enjoying that. Got some really poignant messages. And um, been quite interesting using a directional deck, I have to say. I really do like that energy of that deck. If you see it, it might be worth picking up. And it's kind of small enough as well. That's what I like about it. It's a small square deck. So it's like very easy to shuffle for us baby-handed people. So yeah, give it a go. It's been really nice to have the forest again as the anchor for those cards. A um, bit more than the darker side. Obviously, it's a Dark Days deck definitely has potential to be more of a shadow work deck or a deeper dive deck but it's been quite good for weekly reads as well i have to admit so quite versatile in that regard so that's been uh, been a, a joy to work with again this month um same old ones again that i'd already spoke on the ink which still getting used um etc the okay yochai so that's been good um and then another combo which aesthetically just like amazing how these work together would be the Wandering Star Tarot. So glad I actually got a hold of this. Like I did get this as a present for Christmas. Kind of been putting off, but this is so like my vibe and I absolutely love the pierces, you know, and um, Cat Pierce made this deck. You made my... They got such great songs. I wish they'd come back. I don't think anyone harmonizes as good as siblings, do they? <laughs> 
I love it, it's sort of folky kind of hippie kind of vibe to it. Um, but if we, and I actually love how the words are incorporated in the in, in the deck. It'd be quite a good beginner's deck, I think. It's quite a Taurian deck as well, actually. With that sort of grounded vibe. I wonder if she is a Taurus, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I'll be pairing that with the Journey to the Goddess Realm Oracle deck. You'll see why. They have quite a similar stay. Both quite feminine energies in these decks. But um you can see the artwork. I just feel like they go really well together. And I've really been enjoying the messages that come through. These like very lifting kind of very um easy easy to read, easy to understand, like feminine energy from the from them both. I find it quite good while I've been trying to like stay focused and galvanize myself through this uh, January period. Definitely loving that goddess energy for sure, like calling upon that. But um, yeah, I love the feel of these cards as well. That's been a really nice little combo going on there, I have to admit. Definitely glad that I noticed that they would go well together. Even the backs to a degree. Pretty cool, right? Very hippie-ish. But yeah, there's some combos I've been using and liking this January. Definitely um, kind of stepping into a bit more colour. <laughs> um, as I've been using quite a lot of like saturated and kind of monochromatic kind of decks I, I feel through like the December period. It's nice to add a bit of pizzazz, a little bit of colour there in the form of these decks and a bit of that feminine energy i'm enjoying that actually i find it quite reassuring goddess decks especially let me know what your favorite goddess decks are i'm actually in the well am i because i shouldn't be buying many, many more decks should i but um i have a couple actually maybe i'll do a video on my goddess decks um so i was working with like that sort of energy uh, last year um but um, yeah, I'd like to dive into it more maybe at the end of uh, second half of this year, potentially. So yeah, and that one's quite, I don't see many people talk about this deck, this Journey to the Goddess Realm, but I actually think it's pretty good. The guide looks not bad either. It's got quite a, an array of goddesses from across cultures as well that interests you. And I do think that, you know, I'm not the biggest on the sort of font or the border too much, if I'm honest, but I reckon you could lob that off. I think that the artwork is very beautiful though. I feel like the goddesses themselves are drawn quite beautifully. Hecate. So yeah, check it out. I shall leave all the decks in the description as usual. Can I get these cards back in the box? That is the million dollar question. Yes, I can. Can you kick it? Yes, you can. Can you dig it? Oh, yes, you can. Okay. So guys, I think that's me done for January. A um, bit shorter than usual, which isn't a bad thing because my video is going kind of track on a bit, can't lie. Um, but yeah, really being quite a grounding month, uh, a bit of a hermit phase, but I'm happy with that. Um, nice to sit in and read and kind of like get my practice down a little bit, get those foundational parts of my practices down. And just take stock of what I want to build on from last year, really. I think that's what January is all about. I do quite like this sort of resolution phase. I really do want to, like, make sure that I stick to that and keep my focus. And a word of a year might be a shout, guys. If you, if you don't do that, it could be, you know, less um, daunting than a resolution and a, and a goal. Because it's something you can always go back to, you know, for all aspects of your life during this year. So maybe give it a go. And yeah, let me know how your January went. And um, yeah, I hope you're well, wherever you are. I hope, you know, you're feeling motivated and, and happy for the year going forward. And if not, don't worry. You make resolutions any time of the year, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and um, yeah, stay well, guys. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.